Hi everyone, let's review experiment four, carbon to cover crawl lab this time. We know that in this experiment, our carbon was the starting material to be catalyzed by sulfuric acid to form cover crawl, right? If you take a look at the starting material, so on the left, I provided two structures, R carbon and S carbon. Let's compare the two structures. You will realize that the stereochemistry of the two enantiomers depended on the stereochemistry of this carbon that I labeled out with a red pen, right? We know that they were enantiomers with each other. And you have one minute to take a look and then decide which one is the R carbon, which one is the S carbon, and refresh your memory. All right, you should figure it out by now that the structure on the top will be R carbon, while the structure at the bottom will be S carbon, right? We used R carbon as the starting material for this chemical reaction. And be very careful about the order of the ketone and also the double bond. Sometimes I see students remembering the general structure. However, we're mixing up about the two positions of those, which lead to wrong structures. All right, then we had a question in the quiz asking, what if you started this experiment with S carbon, the enantiomer of the correct structure? Will you still be producing the same cover crawl? Why or why not? Well, the answer is yes, you will still be producing the same cover crawl product. If you focused on the carbon involved that have a stereo, a stereo center, you would realize that this center was actually converted to one of the one of the the size on the benzene ring, right? And we know benzene ring is sp2 hybridized carbon, they're a planar structure. So in the final cover crop product, you're losing the stereochemistry, stereospecificity, right? Which means that either way you start with R or S isomer, you will have the same products since you're losing the stereospecificity specificity. And also um, if you're not sure whether it's going to the same product or not, try write out the mechanism. That's going to help you figure out if it's going towards the same direction or not. Okay. All right. Secondly, let's talk about mechanism, which is a very important part of this experiment. Let's remember the structure of R carbon, which is our starting material. Try picture what's going to happen in an acidic environment. Well, there are a lot of protons everywhere to be deprotonated, right? And you also have an oxygen, which is going to be easily be protonated by the proton lying around, right? Which lead you to the formation of the intermediate. The rest will remain the same. We also know that you will be forming a benzene ring in the end. So let's move toward that direction by creating a double bond. Fortunately, you have a proton there that's readily to be eliminated, right? So I'll use a nucleophile water, although not very strong, but it's able to do the job. Well, you started with a cation, you're moving towards 
to form a conjugation, conjugated double bond the diene, and also the molecule became neutral, right? So it's becoming more stable. That's good. A reaction want to go to a lower energy end, it, it wants to be more stable, right? It also loves conjugation. So the first step is called acid catalyzed enolization. Enolization, which we are very familiarized with already, okay? All right, what's happening next? Well, let's move towards the formation of a bending ring. And this time, we saw there's a, a not conjugated, but double bond lying around, right? Which also can be protonated. Well, the stereochemistry will remain the same and leave me with a cable cation intermediate, right? Well, I want to re. I want to form a double bond here. If that's the case, by eliminating, then I should be forming a cable cation on this carbon instead, right? And we know something that can help with that, which is called a hydride shift. We are very familiarized with hydride shift already. So you have hydrogen here. It's going to shift. Well, you may still leave the stereochemistry as it is, right? And the next step we'll do will be elimination again of a proton. At the same time, formation of a double bond restores the aromaticity of this product. OH, since we're going to form a highly conjugated bending ring, which is a planar structure, then this carbon will not have a stereochemistry involved, right? That's going to be our final cover crop product. Right. Um, so this step, we started with protonation, followed by a hydride shift, and then the subsequent elimination will provide, will provide us with a final formation of cover crawl. Um, one of the questions in the post lab was asking about the driven force behind this mechanism. Because if you compare the starting material and the final product, you will realize that, well, you started with a, with a ketone. You ended with an eno, keto eno, and we know that they they, they tautomerize with each other. However, ketone was the more preferred, more preferable structure because it's more stable. However, you form the enone, which seemed to be very strange, right? So one of the pushing forces or the driven forces for this reaction to con continue will be the production of the very stable bending ring. It's highly conjugated, it's very stable uh, energetically, very low and stable, which will drive the reaction towards the formation of the conjugated ring and conjugated double bond, which is why the eno form in this sense became the more favorable product. Right?
and let me go over the i think y'all did very good on the fdir analysis and also the um yield analysis so i'm not gonna be spending time on that um also if you figure out how to write the mechanism for this reaction you should be able to provide the mechanism for the um, acid catalyzed analyzation of the example compound in the um, second post lab question as well. Okay, if you want to um, fix that and if you're not sure whether you got it right or not, you can send me an email so I can um, go over this for you. All right, um, everyone got the fourth question correct, which is the optical rotation of the S compound after you know the data for the R compound. The parameter will be reversed and um, same number but reversed. Right. Um, in the very last question, it says that what caused a bubble to be formed when you wash or extract your reaction mixture with sodium bicarb bicarbonate? Well, when you saw bubbles, you know you're producing a gas, right? Most likely the gas will be um, hydrogen, oxygen, CO2, which is a very common popular choice. CO, unlikely. Um, N2, not really. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes. And um, these are the common choices that you may encounter. Um, since you added sodium bicarb, you also know that you used sulfuric acid as the catalyst and also electrophile of this reaction. Then you want to wash or extract your reaction mixture with sodium bicarb because you want to get rid of the sulfuric acid catalyst. That's not your product, right? So you, it's kind of like a quenching step as well. The reaction that's happening will be... which is a product and water and CO2. The next thing you will need to do will be balancing the equation, right? So there are two sodium, I need two sodium, two carbons, two carbons. Let's see whether our hydrogen matched. So you have two hydrogens on the left, four, two, right? The oxygen will match as well. You may also write the equation like this, HSO2. So if I only provided one proton for from sulfuric acid to do the neutralization, then you will have sodium SO4 as a byproduct, H2O and CO2, right? That's a bubble you will see. Both equations are correct for this question. If you want to break them down from a full equation to an ionic equation, you can also do that. So there are the third and fourth and the fourth choice. So how do you break a full equation to a to a ionic equation? Sometimes I saw mistakes from students where they put partially full equation and partially ionic equation, which is not correct. If you want to do an ionic equation in the first place, you will have to break all the ionic compound into ions in the first in the first place. We'll use a second reaction as example. So you have sodium bicarb. Um, the two protons as a four and as a four. There's no between, right? You can't break sulfuric acid, but not break sodium bicarb, right? You either break them all into ions or do not break either. Leave them at the full equation. Water can it be break down? Not really, it's a molecule, right? And CO2, nope, it cannot be break down and it's gonna evaporate into the air. All right, now the next thing you will do is to cross out all the same ions because they do not participate in the ionic equation, right? You have two sodium um, cations in the starting material, you have two sodium 
and a cations in the final products, which means that sodium cations do not participate in the reaction at all. So you're crossing them out, right? What else? Well, there's one proton. I'm going to leave that as one. And sulfate, water. Nope, there's no water. Okay, the rest of them, the rest of them will remain, right? So if you put them at an ionic equation, it will look like this, a proton which gives you H2O and CO2. Let's double check it again to make sure they have the same number of 